about that. I have spent months putting this video together, talking to companies, testing out gear. I know it's a tough life, but somebody's got to do it, right? Now, disclaimer, I'm not going to try and sell you anything here. I'm not going to hold back on anything. I don't make any money. If you do decide to buy a collar in this video, and quite frankly, I couldn't give a monkeys if you do or not. But there is some seriously crap equipment out there, especially in the pet shops. And there is also some epic bits of kit, hence the video. That being said, I haven't paid for any of these collars, apart from postage for some. But that wasn't expensive enough to bias my opinion one way or another. Now, if you're here to see me tear into one of these, then spoiler alert, I've only chosen decent bits of kit. You know my ethos, I promote what you love and all that. Now, that being said, I might have fallen off the wagon a little bit. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to the contenders. Now, in no particular order, I'm gonna start with the nickname that I've given them. The Big Guns. Canine Crew. Now, they've sent me a couple of collars. One with a handle, <laughs> and one without. Joe's used their kit on Channel 4 before, um, so we kind of know them. They're, they're currently supplying dogs in Her Majesty's Prison Service, as well as police and military across Europe. These are the Coyote Tactical Collars. Next up is the Serving Soldier, JTAC K9. Now, hands up, I hadn't heard of this dude prior to putting a shout out on my Facebook page where I was inundated with people who loved this guy. This is a one-man band who's also currently serving in the military. He's army, so just a couple of stops down from being a Marine, but seems really cool nonetheless. This dude offers an upcycling service and a lifetime guarantee, and this is the original pro. This is the Cheryl Cole of the bunch, mere canine, and I have two of their collars here. Now, I wanted to include the old collar because I've had it for over five years. It's been worn by two Malinois and it stood the test of time. Now, they were the only guys to send out a smaller size collar, which incidentally fits Aya perfectly, my little spaniel. But like Cheryl Cole, they are stunning. She wouldn't necessarily be my first choice if I was exploring the jungles of Brunei. And this is the mini tactical collar. And then we have the Yanks. Modern Icon are probably one of the biggest companies in this review. Tighter than a duck's butt, yet the most expensive product in this video. This collar was gifted to us because they wouldn't send out a collar. Humbug. It's too sexy not to include though, so this is from their Operator series. And then we have the underdogs. She Ha for the Working Dog, run by a couple of ladies who are or were military dog handlers. I hold a bit of a soft spot for these guys as they first sent out a collar for review and after testing it out, I kind of basically told them that they weren't ready. There was no sulking, no bitching. They got on top of the things that mentioned and now they are ready. This is their 45 millimeter black collar with handle. And lastly, Bully Billows. Wait, what? Nothing? Yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, after loads of going backwards and forwards with someone who's really nice on their social media, thank you, their head office let me down. I've paid postage but received nothing up until this point. I first contacted them in April. It's now July. Some people rave about them, but I can only tell you what, what my experience is. Ooh, burn! Nailed you, buddy! So, let's dig into the pros and cons of the kit that's actually in front of us. Now, I've broken down the review into several sections, and first up is buckles. The buckle is a major weak point on some collars, and I've had a couple fail on me over the years, and it's always at the worst possible time. So, straight out the gate, all of the above have strong buckles. The industry standard seems to be the popular Austri Alpin Cobra buckle. Now, there are some replicas out there, but these ones are all legit. I've checked them out. If you take the JTAC K9 one, for instance, this one is rated up to 1,800 kilograms. And if you need that, you don't have a dog, you have an elephant on the end of your lead. Austri Alpin buckles are also used on theme parks for roller coaster seats, climbing equipment, repelling kit, etc., etc. They are military grade bits of kit that are proper hardcore. There are various types of Cobra buckle, which of course come with their own pros and cons. Canine Crew 
use the original fixed model. Mir K9 uh, has the FM Cobra buckle and JTAC K9 and Shihar for the working dog both support the D-Ring Cobra Pro Style. Now aesthetically, I actually prefer the D-Ring, but in practice, I found it a little bit cumbersome. The movement is quite stiff, which is fine, but the, mig the niggle that does it most for me is I use this specific short lead for training. Now, it has an element of sentimental value because I bought it during a visit to Michael Ellis's training center while we were touring the States. Now, it comes with this really small clasp, which doesn't fit the D-ring properly. Okay, so I can put it on, but I can't turn it. Now, don't get me wrong, it fits perfectly with any normal lead, but I'm not about to ditch this anytime soon. And that leads us into leash attachment. But before we discuss this, the modern icon features um, the ISC click lock buckle, as opposed to the Austria-Alvin Cobra buckles, most others use. Now, when I asked them why, the reason they gave is, and I quote, that the design of the Cobra is such that the male and female ends form a V. When you grab the buckle, your fingers naturally fall into the groove and have a very good chance of releasing the buckle. Because the ISC buckles have a different design, it mitigates this issue, okay? There is a, and they said there is a very, very small chance that it could still happen. Now, both the ISC and the Cobra buckle use a dual stage lock. So both release tabs have to be pressed for you to open it, okay? So the chances of that being high are bullshit in my opinion. Is it less likely with the ISC? Yeah, probably, but only marginally. None of these collars have faltered in any way when it comes to the buckles in my experience. And that brings us to the last of the collars. Even the mini tactical collar has a Cobra buckle. This one is the Cobra FM. It's not for heavy load bearing, but still has an 800 pound working load. So much more than capable of keeping your dog safe, um, especially if it's that small. Lead attachments. So I briefly mentioned the D-ring on both the Shiha for the working dog collar and the JTAC canine and my very personal specific hang up about the D-ring. All right, so I'm gonna start with the mini tactical collar that has a small standard D-ring, which is what you'd expect, okay, if you want it on a small breed collar in fairness. Now their large collar has uh, the same fitting as the canine crew, which is a singular piece triangular lead attachment point. It sticks out from the side with the one that hasn't got a handle. Uh, it's triangular in shape, it's all one piece of metal. Um, Modern Icon have opted for something similar. Um, triangle attachment here. However, the agitation version of the canine crew collar has the same thing, but it sits flush underneath the handle, okay? And, and it's got this sexy bit of padding which cushions contact between the dog and the attachment, preventing any nasties from happening to the dog. So next up is material. When it comes to the material, we're dealing with a selection of top quality collars here. All right, so it's not about whether they're strong enough. We know they are. So a lot of this will come down to personal preference. And I'm gonna go in order of rigidness. Modern Icon is by far the stiffest of all the collars. Now they openly admit they design their collars for military personnel, but for everyday wear, it seems to be just a little too tough for me. Pros include it fully wrapping around the neck, providing protection from the clasp, and according to Modern Icon, the construction of the collar is such that a continuous piece of webbing connects to the buckle. Essentially, this means that if every straight stitch could come undone, and it would still hold. But cons means it usually snags when you're putting it on or, or taking it off. If you're one of those that leaves your dog's collar on all the time, then it's not really that much of an issue. But if you remove them on a daily basis, just forget about it. Next one is the JTAC canine collar. Now this particular collar is constructed from genuine Type 13 webbing, which is most commonly used in parachute rigging. The webbing has been tensile tested up to 7,000 pounds. Sewn together by 30s bonded nylon thread, which is rot and mildew proof, has good UV resistance properties, high tensile rating, and as good shock absorption. Uh, a unique feature is the small tab in here. Now this stops the buckle coming into contact with the dog, 
thus reducing fur snagging. Shiha use a high-end grade cotton webbing sewn together with a lubricated polyester tensile strength thread. That makes this item tough and hard to break. Not only is it highly resistant to abrasion, it's also extremely resilient to degradation, and this means it's versatile for all weathers. After sending me their first collar, they've added Velcro to the inside, which has made it more rigid and more robust. And the cotton webbing is softer to the touch. Canine Crew is a lot thinner than those mentioned previously. And in Spain, I'd consider that a pro. It also makes it lighter, which is a bonus too. However, the Velcro on the outside is the only bit I don't really like. It doesn't quite fit the collar. Mere Canine is the thinnest and lightest of the lot. It's hardly a like for like test, but if I use the old collar as a reference, it still sits in that category. As I say, it's not a bad thing for me. Plus they have some sexy stitching going on and uh, the webbing is a military spec polyamide. The thread is synthetic polyester. Next, we have to look at the handles. So this seems to be a relatively touchy subject in the dog world. But as always with us, it's less about rights and wrongs and more about you guys having the information to make a choice based on the pros and cons. All the companies give you the option if you want to choose to have a handle or not. Well, apart from one, <clears throat> Mon Nikon. When it comes to those that do supply handle options, there are pros and cons. A handle is like it or not, an extra snag point on the collar. If you're throwing your dog over a fence in pursuit of the bad guy, then in a very unfortunate circumstance, the handle could snag and hang the dog. If you weren't present, this could be fatal. Now let's be clear, the chances are slim and it's not completely out of the realms of possibility for it to happen on a collar that doesn't have a handle. It's happened before. Personally, I like a handle. I find it useful for transporting the dog short distances, getting them in and out of the car, standing next to the road, and in bike work, it just makes my life a little bit easier. If you're sitting there saying, but the villain could grab the handle, then you've never had a Malinois ring off your arm, have you? And if that is the argument you're using, then the entire collar is a handle. Anyway, the way I see it is there are some standard things to think about. The easier it is to snag, the easier it is to grab. Too small and you end up fumbling trying to get your hands on it. The handle, the handle. How was her British English, do you think? Well, uh, ultimately impeccable. The handle can't give when the dog is being worked, so stitching is really important, so let's breeze through these. Shiha have the largest uh, of all the handles. JTAC K9 has the widest. K9 Crew, in my opinion, has the most comfortable. Mir K9 sits flushest to the collar, and Mod Nikon don't think you're intelligent enough to make your own decision. All there is really left to say is, what's the damage? So K9 Crew rocking at uh, 60 pounds, okay? Mod Nikon is also 60 pounds. JTAC K9 is 60, no, it's not, 53 quid. Shiha comes in at 40. The Mir K9 comes in at 20, but even the bigger versions come in at 39, so that's 20. So they go in that order. Now, Billy Bollows, will cost you 15 pounds postage with no collar. I'll update you on the progression of how these collars last on my Facebook page. So make sure you head over there and drop me a like and to keep in touch. With regards to these kind of videos, tutorials and special offers, then make sure you subscribe. And if you've enjoyed the video, drop me a like, it would be much appreciated. So, bleepy blah blah was a no-show, possibly because they were scared of the competition. Mod Nikon is still a sexy bit of kit, but it wouldn't be my choice. I want to give a shout out to Shiha K9. These are a serious contender. They've got room to grow, they price themselves accordingly, and if they can bring that extra missing element of fashion to the dog training world, I think they're gonna go far. Now, if I was gonna pick a collar to look the part for my pet girls, the Spanner or the Vizsla, or even Khaleesi, my broken Malinois, it would be a mere canine collar. Okay, these stand out. There is a ton of customization options 
and they're not gonna break the bank. That leaves our work in Malinois. The bigger, stronger Blake, and the faster, more agile Fizz. Now, these two collars are really top range. I'd get a JTAC K9 collar for Blake. I haven't tested it, but I would put my money on it that it's the strongest of all these collars. They've even sent me this clip of them using their collar to tow a vehicle. Job done. Now, that strength comes at a cost though. It's a heavy bit of kit. No problem when you're rocking a rotty, but for Fizz, it's just overkill. So I'd be purchasing a K9 Crew for Fizz. The handle, obviously the color, uh, the lead attachment are all bonus points for me on this particular mug. Now, as I said at the beginning, if you, you're not gonna go wrong with any of these collars. They're all quality, and thank you for getting involved. Not you, Modern Icon, or Billy Bullows. Bolly, Bill, what? But these two particularly stand out to me. Do you have a favorite out of this bunch? Or have I totally missed one? If so, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'm out.